It's no surprise that Mexican cartels have powerful allies with countless under-the-table partnerships with even the most notorious of names. But rarely do we realize just how large-scale some of these partners can be. This is the story of how the Sinaloa cartel orchestrated one of the biggest money laundering operations in the world's history through a U.S. bank. The Beginning of the End during the period of economic downturn leading up to the 2008 financial crisis, many banking institutions were suffering and at the brink of collapse. Antonio Maria Costa, the former head of the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, said that many banks escaped the clutches of failure by relying on transactions made through the drug trade since capital from narcotics was the only dependable source of capital. Wachovia was no exception, but it seemed as though they flew too close to the sun for their own good. Wachovia was one of the United States' biggest chains of banking institutions, with over 3,400 branches in the U.S. in over 21 states. It was a trusted financial institution by the American public. It has since been acquired by financial giant Wells Fargo, but prior to the 2008 acquisition, the bank shocked the world by coming under fire for being the facilitator of billions of dollars in laundered money for Mexican cartels. On April 10, 2006, Mexican soldiers intercepted a DC-9 jet in Ciudad del Carmen. They had been anticipating the usual goods, such as drugs, money, and firearms. And yes, they obviously found 5.7 tons of cocaine. However, what they hadn't ever expected was discovering a paper trail that would unravel years of secret operations by the Wachovia Bank to launder dirty cartel money. This operation kick-started a 22-month investigation by members of the Internal Revenue Service, U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, and other high-level agencies in an attempt to get to the bottom of this case. Authorities were able to track down billions of dollars in wire transfers, cash shipments and checks between Mexican cartels and Wachovia accounts dating back to 2004 during the start of the drug war. Immediately, Wachovia Bank faced criminal proceedings and was under severe scrutiny for their participation in the illegal drug trade. Despite this, the matter was never settled in court. Through the U.S. District Court in Miami, Wachovia resolved the most significant case brought under the U.S. Bank Secrecy Act in March 2010. The bank is effectively exempt as the year's deferred prosecution had expired. Wachovia was fined $50 million for failing to keep track of the funds that had been used to ship 22 tons of cocaine and it forfeited $110 million to federal authorities for enabling transactions that were later found to be related to narcotic smuggling. In addition to this, the bank was sanctioned due to the fact that they did not apply the proper anti-laundering strictures to a $378.4 billion transfer into dollar accounts from Mexico's currency exchange houses, otherwise known as Casas de Cambio or CDCs. The U.S. government had informed Wachovia Bank of the risks and dangers of failing to report suspicious activity as early as 2004. However, all of their warnings fell on deaf ears. They continued to facilitate all transfers despite fully being aware of their involvement in financing drug trafficking and other illegal activities. It was clear that the bank was willingly enabling the cartel's actions by turning a blind eye to their laundering efforts. The burden of these laundering schemes fell into the hands of the everyday taxpayer, and Wachovia knew this for a fact. Yet, they sat idly by as billions of dollars went through their institution, safely returning to the hands of the cartel. This money was used to aid several cartel operations, such as through the purchasing of airplanes for cross-border drug trafficking operations, the acquisition of firearms and other weaponry, or the purchasing of properties used as safe houses or home bases for cartels. In 2007, a raid was conducted in Mexico City on the home of Chinese-Mexican pharmaceuticals tycoon Zhen Li Ye Gong. During the raid, $205.6 million was found in $100 bills. Zhen Li Ye Gan was a notorious businessman that had been a prime suspect of drug trafficking operations between Asia and Mexico. 
Through the operation, it was found that Yigon had ties to not only narcotics trafficking but also terrorism and illegal firearms. A deep dive investigation began into his finances and a large sum of his money was traced back to Wachovia Bank. With such a high-profile criminal using Wachovia as his main source of money exchange, it was looking grimmer and grimmer for Wachovia Bank. But as you might already know, it's very hard to get off the pump while it's milking unimaginable amounts of money for you. It's probably the hardest thing to do in the world. A Whistleblower's Part the operation continued to uncover all of the skeletons in Wachovia's closet, but there was one specific whistleblower at the center of the case that connected all the right dots. Martin Woods was a senior anti-money laundering officer at Wachovia Bank in 2005. Prior to this job, he had been a member of the Metropolitan Police Drug Squad and was involved as a detective in the money laundering investigation team of the National Crime Squad. While at Wachovia, he noticed several discrepancies and suspicious transactions. The biggest red flag for Woods was that the Euro Traveler checks were in significantly high amounts, much more than the average traveler would need. These checks also had little to no information to accompany their deposits, and with a lack of background on the client, it made the massive sum of money even more suspicious. When Woods brought the issue up to Wachovia's global head of anti-money laundering for correspondent banking, he was met with a less than enthusiastic response. He had initially planned on blocking the party submitting these checks under the impression that they were being used for tax evasion, but it seemed that Wachovia was opposed to the action. Taking matters into his own hands, Woods submitted a series of suspicious activity reports to the UK authorities as well as his superiors at the bank's headquarters in Charlotte, North Carolina. During this time, Wachovia was already under close supervision by the US government and federal agencies, and they had been issued multiple subpoenas in regards to their possible involvement with the Mexican drug trade. Woods's continuous pressure on the bank, accompanied with the threat of federal investigation, incentivized the bank to end relations with several Mexican casas de cambio, but the damage was already done. In July 2007, the remaining Mexican currency exchange houses ended their partnership with Wachovia, and shortly after, news of a high-scale investigation into the bank was reported in the U.S. financial media. For a majority of the investigation, Woods would remain ill. His role in the investigation, however, remained integral to the outcome, much to Wachovia's dismay. The bank had even issued warnings to Woods for his actions, which pushed him to the brink of a mental breakdown. He had to join a stress management course and begin a series of medications as a result. Despite this, his efforts would not go unrecognized. It was his participation in the investigation and his relentless pursuit of truth that helped the U.S. government put an end to Wachovia's activities. John Duggan, the Comptroller of Currency, sent him a formal letter on March 19, 2010, expressing his appreciation for his hard work and diligence, in turn crediting him with assisting in bringing down Wachovia. The Nail in the Coffin on March 16, 2010, the senior vice president of Wachovia Bank, Douglas Edwards, signed a 25-page settlement which confirmed the bank's role in enabling illegal money laundering in the Mexican drug trade. With over $373.6 billion laundered through CDCs and an estimated $4.7 billion in straight cash, the consequences of this case should have been severe. However, Wachovia Corp's case was closed after a $160 million settlement fee, with $50 million being paid to the U.S. Treasury. To this day, this is still the largest penalty ever to be paid for a U.S. Bank Secrecy Act violation. Through this fee, Wachovia Bank and its executives were able to avoid criminal prosecution and keep the past behind closed doors due to the Wells Fargo acquisition. This could also be due to the fact that sources say that Wachovia Bank fully cooperated with authorities throughout the duration of the investigation. Although this massive criminal scam will go down in history as one of the most corrupt and shameful corporate deeds, it seems that this case has vanished from the public.
You most probably only hear about it on YouTube, but not on big media outlets. Wells Fargo continues to be one of the United States' most successful banking institutions, and word is rarely out about Wachovia Bank's deep, dark past.